But I think the main things is at the end of the day, volleyball is volleyball. It's in the same nine by nine court, and the rules are the same. So we. Uh, <laughs> is that on the back of your shirt? Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, yeah, it's on the back of your shirt. <laughs> a little free shout out for you. Um, and it doesn't matter who's on the other side of the net. You need to still execute to the best of your ability if you want a chance to win. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Please, if you are able, stand for the playing of our national anthem. Yes. I'm yes, now Bulgarian. Ever. I, I am now I am now Bulgarian. Bulgaria is me. Anyone from this Bulgarian team, you guys want to come to Canada? You let me know. Call me up. We'll make it happen. We'll we'll, we'll make it happen. Wow, Rob St. Clair, what wow. did we just see? My name is Everett Delorme. That's Rob St. Clair. This is the nine by nine, the eighty-one square meters of the best volleyball on the internet. Oh, and ladies and gentlemen, that is it for the twenty twenty-three. Uh, FIVB Volleyball World International Season. But more importantly, Rob, we have six more teams that are going to the Olympics. Your United States of America and my Maple Volleys are both going to the Olympics. Let's go! Unbelievable. 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 And yes, uh, if you are Canadian, you owe Bulgaria <laughs> So much. So, so, so much. It is absolutely un unthinkable Rob, how I'm, how this has all gone down. I'm gonna I'm gonna walk you through this. Okay. So as I, as I said, I and I said it during the last episode, I was not getting my hopes up at all. This is a long tournament. I knew what was I knew what was happening, right? Um so uh, fast forward, we lose to Belgium on Friday night. And I'm I'm bummed, you know. I I was I was in the pit of it. That that wasn't fun. I, I I didn't like that at all. But you know what? We regroup. We 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 go for it again. And I'm at work on Saturday night, and I'm just looking at the scores on my phone. And the first set, Bulgaria or B Belgium's leading the whole time. And Bulgaria comes back to win it, and I'm like, okay, maybe there's a chance here. Second and third, Belgium's just all over them. And I was just like, like I was literally like in my head, I was writing out like my speech of how I was going to start this show, basically <laughs> congratulating Belgium and just being like, you know what, we, we, we tried our best. And then, of course, Bulgaria comes back to win. I got to watch the end of the fourth and then in like and the fifth uh, as I was finishing up work and as I was walking home. And if, if you're on the discord, you saw the video of me getting hype. It wasn't an alley. It, it was just a side street. Me getting hype and tossing my bike. I did actually end up breaking my bike a little bit. Uh, I could not <laughs> ride it to work on, on Friday or on Sunday uh, afterwards. But it was so worth it. I almost got to a hit by a car into a fight on my bike ride home. But I was just too jazzed. Because Canada is going back to the Olympics in, in a dramatic fashion. Uh, first and foremost, though, Rob, before we say anything else, I do want to give a big shout out to that Belgian team. Oh, I know yeah. they're probably going through it right now. I know oh, yeah. it's probably a tough time for them um, because they 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 deserved that spot, truly, with how they played throughout this tournament. But uh, at the end of the day, Canada's going to the Olympics. Canada's going to the Olympics. Canada's going to the Olympics. Oh, man. So congratulations. We now know seven of the 12 men's Olympic teams for next summer. Obviously, France, we've known for a long time they will be hosting they'll defend olympic gold but germany brazil the united states japan poland and canada are headed to paris 2024 this was legitimately the most ridiculous volleyball tournament i have ever watched like seriously it, it honestly was and we've we've talked about it we've had two shows and week. yeah all, we, we've talked about it all throughout the week we've talked about the insanity that that has been this tournament we talked about we talked about germany we talked about uh, the, the chaos in Pool A for that second spot, which we'll certainly get to. Japan, after losing to Egypt, comes back, goes 12-0 and 0 in sets, and they qualify after day six. But like the, that situation with Canada in Pool C, losing to Belgium head-to-head, -head, then, oh. need, then needing Belgium to lose to Bulgaria, when Bulgaria technically really had nothing to play for. Nothing. Which, 
nothing, which then happened nothing. 15, 13 in the fifth. And then all Canada had to do was beat Mexico who failed to win a set the entire tournament. And they're going back to Paris. Like that was absolutely insane. So we'll, we'll talk about every team. We'll talk about every pool. We'll talk about the teams who missed out. We'll talk about the rankings picture for next summer, but Everett, your thoughts just overall on on this event, on this week's event. It's still like I don't know if I've ever watched a week of volleyball that was so tumultuous. I don't know if I've ever watched a week of volleyball that made me want to watch more because I didn't know what was going to happen game to game. You know, and it was that was very clear after the first block of games. Like we basically had three three blocks of games, the two, two, and the three. Um, right. So yeah, after that those first two days i was like this is this is one that you like need to keep an eye on and that's 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 exactly what it was um the fact that if you had told me back in june when canada and germany played each other and the reality was that like oh this is basically a relegation match this is a relegation match between two of the worst teams in the vnl that those two teams would be qualifying directly as technically like the top best six teams in, in the world is absolutely bonkers to me um but just just like day in and day out like there was drama down to the wire like that italy brazil match has so oh, many yeah. implications at the, at the end of it like other than your bor boring ass pool b um, which had one upset at, at the beginning, and then it was a snooze fest the rest of the time. Pool A and Pool C were absolutely electric. Um, and yeah, it, it was just overall phenomenal. How about how about for you, Rob? What, what was it like for, for you as you guys were like, USA was the only team, the only team to get through this event without any drama. None whatsoever. The only tiny bit of drama was the Turkey egg game. Oh, and come like, on. You're just fishing for that, it right now. That's that's a tiny bit of drama, like especially in comparison. Uh, it was it was outstanding for me to have my team not be part of any of the drama, but to just like look at all the absolute carnage going on in the other two pools. That was great for American fans. Like I have a lot of takes on this whole event. It ended up being the most dramatic and fun volleyball tournament I've ever watched. It really was. And the, I think the format of it and where it was in the calendar and all that there was, that was happening leading up to it had a lot to do with how crazy it ended up being. We will never see this particular format again. We already know that going in the R. next R. quad, all right, uh, next quad, it will be completely different. It's kind of going back to continental, but not really. Uh, there will be Olympic bids given out two full years before LA 2028. Like we, we, we talked about it when that news came out and we'll talk about it, obviously throughout the next quad but this particular olympic qualifier tournament will never happen again it's clearly it was at the end of a very very long summer where so many teams especially the the top european teams played so much volleyball that had a lot to do with some of their performances the the combination of the world ranking picture with the bids being given out in this tournament made for some really interesting strategies and dramas and like emotional feelings and just the different stakes for the different teams it was it was really fascinating to follow along with and and just incredible incredible as a fan to watch because we we got performances like gayer groser that were all time all time all time great, all time great individual time. and team performances we got complete joy we got complete heartbreak, oh, dude. and ev and everything in between. It was it, it was it was truly incredible to watch. And now, yeah, somebody in the chat said that they're going to have a bit of a withdrawal from after like nine straight days of ridiculous volleyball. And I will too, to be honest. Well, I mean, not only that, but it's like it's been a, it's been a run here, right? Oh, when yeah. you look at the international volleyball calendar in the summertime, it's so jam packed that like what there was a few weeks there in August where we didn't have anything to talk about. Like that's it, right? And then you know, especially especially for us, like it went from Norseka champs, like basically right into Olympic qualifiers, right? Um, so like it, it, there there hasn't been any time in between at 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 all, right? So um, it, it's it's been unreal. But uh, I'm a little sad, Rob, that we're not going to see this uh, format again because yeah um the, this was a lot all right we we've got we still we've got a lot to get into today we do. Uh, where where do we want to start do we want to start with pool a we let's just want to... I, 
I think we got to we got to talk about the six teams. We got okay. I think we got to talk about each of the six teams that qualified and then we got to talk about the teams that did not and what's going on with that. We got to start at the top with Germany. Yeah, let's let's start with the, with the teams from Pool A in Germany and Brazil and no one no one no one could have seen this Rob. No. Nope. No one could have predicted how dominant they were. How clean they looked. How much of an absolute monster Grozier is. This was uh, something else. We may never, we may never see a German team this good ever again. That's that is very possible. And then now that they now that they have qualified for the Olympics, their first since London 2012, they will. I mean. Grozer, one more year of Grozer isn't going to make him any less amazing than he was just now. Like he did this at almost age 39. He'll go to Paris at almost age 40 and try and do the same thing. Like there's no question about it. That will definitely be his last national team tournament next year. Without him after that, uh, I don't have high. I don't have high hopes for Germany after that, unless uh, unless Grozer has a son that we don't let's know let, about. L- no, he has a he has a daughter, right? I she's know already, he has a daughter. She's, she's already jumping on the women's team. Let's let's not talk about the future though. Let's just let's just focus on the now. Right. This Germany. this Germany. But if they, I mean, we they beat Brazil. They they beat Italy, who will go to the Olympics, even though they didn't qualify. They beat Cuba, who has a a decent chance to go to the Olympics, and they destroyed everyone else they played. Yeah. Honestly, since the last no show that we up. did, there wasn't even that much drama because they they no. they had all their hardest opponents first, and then after that, all they had to do was beat Ukraine, Czechia, and Qatar, and I think they they beat Qatar on day six and locked up the bid, so they played the bench on day seven. Uh, yeah, Grozer didn't even play against Ukraine, so. That since we are, we already talked about how ridiculous the those upsets were that Germany pulled off early, but the way that they played, I want to just say again how much I love their style. It's so mm-hmm. it's so simple. It's so straight ahead. They're not mm-hmm. overthinking anything. They're good enough on first contact. Tila just... is really good at chucking the ball to the middle. He mm-hmm. and Brema look awesome together. Obviously, they played at Berlin together. And honestly, even Crick had a really good tournament, which we Man, said last that, year. Let's 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 we don't need he's got ammo for days. Crick on talk TikTok. is Crick talk is hey man, he might take some off days just to just to make some TikToks out, out here. Um yeah. It it, it was and then, unreal. And then when in doubt, you chuck the ball to the ageless one. And and the Georg Roser has has just the, the most insane tournament maybe ever. With uh, let's see what what do you have what do you have points per set wise? Uh, I haven't done the math, but he hit forty two percent efficiency in six matches. It's 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 like nothing I've ever seen in my life. He was absolutely amazing, and th- this this play style is sustainable for them. Yes, the only I mean, it, the only thing that's not is Grozer gets one year older, but they he's he showed just now that that's not going to affect him that much. The, I mean, let's be honest. This is the most stereotypical German thing ever. That their <laughs> sure. offense is just simple and efficient, right? That's 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 what it is. It's Germany to it to the T, and and that's why we love them. This performance has to level up Grozer in some ways, in in my eyes, in like in term, all time, in terms of all yeah. time. Like, you know, I don't know if we can get him up there as being like one of the goats, but absolutely as as a guy who's just just been able to do it so well for so long. Like, remember, like the first time I watched Grozer play was the 2010 World Championships. And he wasn't even a young man. Like, he wasn't young back then. Was I like was young. 20, 25. <laughs> right? So... The fact that he's still able to do it at this level is absolutely phenomenal. And this, the the, the body of work he put out throughout this week, oh. on top of everything that he's already done, you can't, like, you can't help but like, 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 put it in this in in this way. Would you rather Grozier or Wallace? Grozier, Grozier, for sure. Yep. The right? the only person like for the the twenty tens decade, as far as opposites, I think it's Grozier and Mikhailov. Yeah, and Sokolov. But I would put Grozer on top I would, of Sokolov because I would of put because Grozer of on top. Yep. Because I think I think Sokolov's had maybe a better b- better club career, but Grozer has done it nationally, like internationally, way better. And and the things that he's you know like Germany, they went to the Olympics in 2012. 
Grozier. They got up fourth at the uh, World Championships in 2014. Grozier, right? This, this, this whole thing. Like we saw how bad Germany was without them and how good they are with them. Grozier, like you're right. After Mikhailov, Grozier's number two. Yeah, he won a Champions League with Belgorod in like 2014. Like he was really one of the all-time great players and I, I've I've always loved watching him and I'm always I've always wondered like okay when is the because his play style is so firmly based on his physicality the the fact that he's able to still do it at his age is unthinkable it's just insane and uh seems like a great guy seems like a great teammate obviously everybody loves having him back because of how amazing he is but um everybody just seems to love the guy like Arthur Schwartz gushed about him as like kind of yeah. a, a teammate and a mentor and moments of this mentor, past exactly. year. So, and he commented on the video that I made midweek about how good he's been. So that was cool. Uh, like you can't say enough about this German team. They're going to be scary when it comes scary, to Paris. Scary. And what I like about the way that this particular Olympics is shaping up as far as qualification goes, there are going to be zero pushover teams. Even Egypt, who is almost definitely going to qualify out of Africa, that is not a pushover team like some no. that we've seen in the past. Like you, you know, don't you don't get to fall asleep against Egypt. No, absolutely, absolutely like, not. Like England, twenty twelve pushover team. Like Venezuela, last Olympics, yeah. Mexico, yeah. and Olympics past. Like there yeah. have been there have been bad teams that qualify for the Olympics before. Not this time. Germany is legit. They are legit. And if if you don't believe them, ask Italy, Brazil, and Cuba. Yeah, they they got their butts handed to them. I mean, right. Germany didn't go to five, did they? No, no, they didn't go to five. They nope. had, they were the only seven team. with twenty-one points. They were, oh, and the USA, the USA didn't go to five either. Either we, uh, we did. We played the bench against Japan and, and won that one in five after oh, okay. it didn't matter anymore. But yeah, Germany finished the number one team in the entire tournament record-wise. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, for, for sure. Like that was just unbelievable. Why? By uh, by Germany and and Grozier and uh, to, to think that we started this season, Rob, with calls for Winiarski's job. <laughs> I don't think that's happening anymore. Don't think so either. Sign him for another four. Let's go. Get him back in here. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I, I love the style that Germany's played. I love it. They have the right personnel. They have a, a very straight up, simple, efficient play style. It's very, very German. Like you said, I love it. I love it. Yeah. I've loved watching it. Right, Rob. Let's move on now to honestly, I'm gonna say it, and it's weird to say it, the most surprising team to get a bid, I think, in Brazil. Maybe after maybe after Canada. But I think. <laughs> but Brazil, what a ride it's been for them. I still can't believe. I still can't believe they qualified. Uh I did pick this. You did. At the, at, at the beginning of the tournament, I did pick this just because I had a feeling there would be a bunch of garbage, a bunch of tiebreakers, and Brazil would not look good. They would not look convincing, but somehow they would find a way, and they did. They they did. They ended up going 6-1, and one, uh, believe it or not. But they, they had a bunch of five-set scares, like five sets with Czechia and Ukraine. But to their credit, we knew that the, that the showdown was going to come between Brazil, Cuba, and Italy. Those last three days, they were going to play each other in a triangle. Brazil beat both of them, and they beat both of them. or They beat Cuba in four, and then they beat Italy in five to clinch a bit at home. And that had huge implications, like, like you alluded to. But Cuba still very much had a chance if Italy had won that match. Yeah. Nope, Bra Brazil slammed the door. They did the best they could with what they had. And they didn't yes. have much. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I think that the writing was on the wall that they didn't have much because as soon as that match was over, no. as soon as, as Brazil won their last match and clinched a bid, Reynan Dalzoto said, guys, I've done my job. I'm out. That's crazy. Re Reynan Dalzoto has resigned as the head coach of the Brazilian men's national team. After Olympic qualifiers, he is going out on top quote unquote there's a lot to get into about this uh i think that so a lot of the brazilian fans were commenting oh my goodness yes we got two wins in one day one win being to beat italy and qualify the other win to be getting rid of renan Dalzoto. so i know that he has not been popular we have been critical of the way that he's engineered this brazil like this quad for brazil i think he kind of knows this as well i think that he knows that uh going to the olympics next year it might not go very well for brazil I think oh, that so it you won't. think he's getting out of dodge before yes. beforehand. 
Yes, I do. I, I think that he's getting out of Dodge before uh, even more scrutiny comes upon him for a potential failure at the Olympics next year. Because right now, I don't think Brazil's making it out of pools at the Olympics. Even if even if they bring you on Leal back, which they, they would have to to be they have competitive. To. They, they have, have to. to. They, they have, have to. to. They, but yeah. even if they do that, are they a top? Are they in the top half of the Olympic field? No, no, they're not. They're they not somehow the, figured. No, they somehow the figured six. it out for this week. They're not they the figured six. it out for this week, and I, I honestly think that Raynon's like, all right, great. I can I can leave this program with a good taste in my mouth. I got a great win at home in front of a huge Maracanazinho crowd against a great team in Italy. I don't think I can take this team to any higher heights than this. I'm out. Good luck. I think it one shows potential turmoil in the dressing room. Like yeah. I think that shows like if he's doing that right away, this isn't a unified Brazilian front here. You know, like this isn't a unified like team. Like, hey, we're going through this right now, but we're going to get through it together as as a team, right? This is like how crazy we've seen two coaches resign because of this tournament. <laughs> Ridiculous, nuts. It's crazy. That's 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 absolutely bonkers. Um, my question is: Is does Brazil pull the Canada and go back to Resende? You know, does he go back to Bernardino? Do, do do him and Bruno go for it one more time? Um, I, I really don't know. And Brazil, I feel like, is the last country that to ever go in and go get a foreign coach. So who's next for Brazil? Right? That that's the big question to me. I don't know the scene down there enough, you know, to to to, to at all make that uh, uh, that call. So maybe some of our Brazilian friends in the chat and on the Discord and what have you can can help us fill in that picture for us. Um, but uh, this this very much seems like he's you know abandoning ship before it really goes down, and I I, I just don't know like what's a next you know because you can go and get a new coach but other than bringing in Leal and Douglas maybe no nope, no chance like no chance uh, uh, other than some of these guys like where's Brazil gonna go. Who wins the last time they like Luca Relli is truly like their last like big superstar or big star that they've produced because since then like we haven't really seen much. And Luca Relli, by the way, was awesome this week. Awesome. He was he, awesome. He, he carries this team. He For absolutely sure. carries his team. This team lives on his back. Yep. Like. And um, I'm looking at Luca Relli's numbers for the week. Yeah. Uh, Wow, yeah, very good. Uh, great, ser- really good serving. 10 aces, 16 errors. That's really good. 37% efficiency on the week. Good reception. Uh, good numbers against the good teams. He had the ace to win the match against Italy in the fifth set. Like, yeah, w- without Lucarelli, then they have no chance this week. I, I think right now that the betting favorite to be the next head coach would be Bernardino. I think that, that that would be the right move. I think that you could easily convince him to come back for like three months and coach VNL next year and then coach the Olympics and then go back into retirement and probably have Bruno ride off into the sunset he's, he's, with his dad. He's not retired. He, he coaches in the, the women's league in Brazil. Right. Right. But like, as far as national team goes, like we, we thought yeah. that Bernardini was going to co- go coach the French team. Like he got that job and then left that job before even coaching a match with France. So like, uh, I, I, I think that they, they could convince him to do one more summer with the men him and his son Bruno right off into the sunset together after Paris, and that'd be it. But somewhere down the line, somebody in Brazilian volleyball is going to have to have the balls to tell Bruno, Lucas, those guys that their time is over. Somebody is going to have to have the balls. But who's act- next? That's well, like, I don't know. Like that's that's the thing is like it's it is that some of that that dilemma where it's like if the young guys aren't getting better to come in and take the old geriatric spot, then like, you're really getting to a spot in there. Right. And like, that's, that's the thing. Like, yeah, we need to get, get to go to the guy, uh, get past those, these guys who are aging, but at the same time, we're all like the only solution we, we have right now for Brazil is Leal. Who's also old. Yeah. Well, <laughs> like it, it needs to, after Paris, it needs to be Kachopa's job. As the senator, yes, with that, with, with absolutely no question, no uncertainty, no competition. 
Uh, Lucas has to retire. He's been one of the great middles of a generation. Mm-hmm. He has to retire. What, whatever it takes, uh, you need to get new blood in there. Have Lucarelli be the leader. Have Leal be the scorer. But you have somebody will have to pull the plug on, on this whole generation for Brazil. Don't know who it's going to be. However, I, I, I do not like their prospects for next year's Olympics. I do not no. think they're set up for success in that tournament. We've said earlier in the week that no people... Teams are not scared of Brazil the way that they used to be. Brazil used to be terrifying. Now, when teams play Brazil, they smell blood in the water a little bit. And I think that if Italy, if Italy didn't just totally run out of gas, and I really think that they did, Italy, Italy just just ran out of gas. They just didn't have it anymore after after the whole summer of playing Gianelli far too much, of going all all the way to the Eurovolley finals and playing the starters in every game in Olympic qualifiers, which we can also talk about later. Yeah, for sure. I I definitely want to touch on uh, touch oh, yeah. on Italy later because I, oh, yeah. Fifa, what are you doing? Yeah, but Brazil Brazil belongs in the Olympics. It's it's they Brazil do. we're talking about. Like you this you is, can't yeah. you can't have an Olympics without Brazil. No, absolutely. is Brazil going to have success at next Olympics? I would say no. But so yes, but we we always do this. We did it at the World Championships. We did it, we did it this year. You know, like we keep on being like. Brazil, Brazil's on the decline, and then they they somehow come back. You know, like didn't didn't one of the, the our VNL episodes this year was like Brazil is still Brazil. Like <laughs> they 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 do this. So who they do? Who, who knows? Who knows? I agree with you fully, but then again, I, we might get foot and mouth disease a little bit later on because who knows? Maybe Bruno will just have one magical tournament, pull a Grosier, and just be amazing, and Brazil ends up being Olymp- you know wouldn't uh, put it Olympic- past him like oh, oh. Bruno Bruno's one of the best players of all time like he, he's he's got that in him somewhere but I just don't I don't oh. see it I don't I don't like the pieces I don't like the sum of the parts I I, I don't see it for the Olympics but they're gonna be there and you never know what's gonna happen although so the uh the chat and discord are starting to praise uh someone named Emil uh because they predicted Germany seven and seven and oh um and oh, yeah, apparently this... emil emil our new prophet has predicted going uh brazil going out in the group stage so if emil <laughs> says that then uh that, that that must be the case also so we, we've got our friend luisa in in the live chat right now i want to give a huge shout out to her because she she's, she's brazilian she was at the games in rio she was oh, at second. the matches in the maracana Zinho and was in was in the discord active the entire insane. time she she was in the Discord the entire time while being at the games, including when the when the volleyball world TV broadcast went out in the Brazil Italy game in like the fourth set. She started streaming it on her phone in the Discord. Wow, what amazing! An absolute hero move. Absolute That's, hero move by Luisa. So once shout out again, to you. that was amazing. But just another reason to join the volleyball source Discord. Volleyball TV doesn't have it, but we still got it. Best community in the world. Best community in the world. That that was that was such a cool moment. So thank you, Luisa, for that. I hope I hope you enjoyed the atmosphere. It looked amazing down there in Rio, as as you would expect. Brazilian fans are some of the best. So that's it for Brazil. I'm fascinated to see where they go from here, coaching wise. If if they make a hire, we'll obviously cover it on this show. Let's move on to Pool B. Quick work here. Quick work. Light work for the boys. The good guys, the United States of America, seven and zero freedom fighters, tech, the tech, Avengers. That's right, freedom fighters. Technically, the World Cup champions, for whatever that's worth. Not very much, in my opinion. We get a little. Oh yeah, I saw, I saw, I saw people like commenting that uh, about us. How are they the World Cup champions and not Germany? Because the the World Cup, quote unquote, was only the pool that was in Japan. Because remember, the old World Cup used to always be in Japan. So they decided just to call that the World Cup. That's kind the of. dumbest thing I've I agree. ever heard. So stupid. So stupid. But we did get a trophy. Whatever. It doesn't matter. The U.S. qualified for the Olympics. It was easy. We qualified for the Olympics easily. It was not dramatic at all. We three donged Serbia on day six to, to secure a bid. We played the bench against Japan, beat them in five. They, they played their bench as well, whatever. This is a massively successful summer for the United States men. Massively successful. Played unbelievable volleyball. They were the best team in the preliminary round of VNL. Ended up taking silver at VNL, losing to Poland and Poland. They won the North Sea Championship relatively easily. And they went seven and zero at Olympic qualifiers. This is a massively successful summer for John Spiro and Team USA. 
I am really happy for them. I am proud of them. I am very optimistic going into next year's Olympics. This team can medal. This team can win Olympic gold. Will they? I don't know. This team can win Olympic gold. They are absolutely an Olympic gold medal contender. They have all the pieces. They really have no weaknesses top to bottom in the roster. Maybe second opposite. We'll, we'll, we'll see what happens when Gabby Garcia becomes eligible. This team is awesome. I love the summer that Team USA has had. It's the most confident I have felt about this team in a very, very long time. Right now, for me, like the U.S. is a solid number two, and I don't think anyone else is close. You know, especially what, especially with what we saw from Italy uh, over this year. Obviously, the shine has come off a little bit. They are the defending world champions, but you know, didn't have a great showing in any of their international tournaments. And I mean, ultimately, like a bit a bit rocky there. But right now, USA is is the solid number two team in the world, and the only team in my eyes that really has a chance to, to push Poland. I think, I still think Italy does. Um, I wouldn't even put Brazil. Like I honestly just put Italy, no. maybe France, maybe France on a, on a miracle day, but France is a dark, is, is a dark horse here. It's been funny yeah. to not talk about them. They've, they've been slipping down the world rankings precipitously, but they will. I mean, France is France. another, they won't I, cold. another dumb reason, but anyways, for, for none. Yeah, exactly. The, 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 the defending chance, but man, you're not wrong. This team USA team looks real good. Now. I, I think the big thing for them is just to stay healthy. If yep. this team can stay healthy throughout this year and you have everyone available, going into uh going into the olympics this team can do absolute damage um it's the most veteran team i think in the world them in france um it, it, they've been together the longest um you've got some of the best players in the world on this team i mean it is truly a, a treat to watch i'll be very honest i didn't watch a second of team usa this week didn't um, have to didn't have to there was too much other drama. And you know what? Michael Christensen and the boys, they got it down on lock. And John Spra has just been killing it. So, yeah. I, honestly, I, I don't even think we need to talk about it anymore. Good, good ups I agree. Team, good ups <laughs> on Team USA. You got, y'all are too damn good. And, and, you're, and, you're, and you're too damn nice, too. They're, uh, I, I, my extremely biased opinion, uh, most fun and most likable team in the world. Yeah, that's They're, a little biased. That's a little biased. <laughs> Right. They're my most likable to me. They, I, I do think that they are the most fun team in the world, and I actually, I will stand by that. Um, elsewhere in Pool B, I do want to give a whole lot of credit to Japan. Japan put, got pushed to five by Finland. They lost in five in a, in a embarrassing reverse sweep to Egypt, and then after that, three dong, three dong. Three dong, three dong to qualify. Dong, 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 they dong, dong, went dong, twelve and zero in sets after that loss to Egypt. They went twelve and zero in sets. They completely woke up. They completely turned it around. They looked way more like Japan, and uh, because of that three zero over Slovenia, I think on day six, um, they had they had they ended up and beating up Slovenia by set record. I think by one set in such a way that that day seven didn't even matter. So they played the bench against the U.S. and Slovenia uh, lost their chance to qualify after day six because Japan went 12-0 and in sets. Had they dropped one set to any of those teams, like Serbia, Slovenia, whatever, it would have been a lot more interesting on day seven. But because Japan was so good, they turned it around completely after the loss to Egypt. They looked more like Japan. Here they are back in the Olympics where they belong. I was very impressed by that turnaround. Yeah, they, they turned out. It wasn't that it wasn't that a, dr a dramatic rob they did they won they ended the uh the tournament with 19 sets won and Slo slovenia had 16 so there was a uh a, a decent spread there but yeah they, well, that was because of the last day like J japan won two sets against the u.s like going into day oh, six, true, they, true 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 yeah yeah, yeah. the margin was was one set okay. the margin was one set and that which which made it over on day six instead of day seven well, that's that's a tough spot for Slovenia to be in, but yeah, I mean, Japan didn't look good earlier in the week against Egypt, and I mean Ishikawa. Like even they didn't even look good against Finland, right? Like they went to five against Finland. Like Ishikawa right. looked tired. I mean, you're talking we're talking about an Italy team that looks tired. Ishikawa is a guy who has really like done it all summer long for, all for summer. his team, all all summer long. So 
Um, obviously, they don't like the the Asian Continental Championships aren't as big of a deal and as as grueling as Euro Volley. And I don't think did Japan even send the A team? I don't I don't think they did. Um, I don't know. Yeah, so I, it 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 doesn't it doesn't really matter. But big ups to J- for for Japan to to qualify. I mean, they they were one of those teams like a Brazil, like an Argentina that knows they're going to qualify regardless, like in Italy. You know that knows they're gonna they're gonna qualify regardless just due to their their current world ranking. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think this is the best Japanese team I've ever seen. So I'm I'm happy that they're they're out here qualifying. I agree, and you can see in the front of that picture they're all holding up the uh, the jersey number three of now Nobu Fuji, who died earlier this year, and they really had had his spirit with them the entire way. They were very very prominent and very vocal about that they were doing this tournament for him playing at home in Tokyo. And uh, that, that was, that was cool to see an, an emotional win for Japan for sure. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, you can just see the emotion on that, on that team's face as like, if, if you switch back to the team USA, one, the team USA guys, I was like, yeah, this is nice. Yeah, like, we're, we're having a whatever. good time. <laughs> that back row was like, yeah, we're boys. We're chilling. Taylor Averill. <laughs> <There's Averill. laughs> he's, um, he's, uh, he's in the track suit next to Matt Anderson. It's like, Oh yeah, with the exactly. stash, just those, grinning those, at the those camera. Those hats are kind of terrible. Like, you know, it, it just those 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 are those are kind of bad hats. Um, I but kinda, uh, I kind of like the hats. But then, yeah, one. if you, I mean, you you could have them. It wouldn't fit my head. There's a, they're too round. <laughs> but then you can just see the emotion here in this in this Japanese photo. They they were stoked for it. But I mean, the USA didn't lose to Egypt, so. Maybe maybe that's why uh, <laughs> maybe that's why Japan felt a little uh, um, you know a, a yeah, little happy. It, so if you don't lose to Egypt, you don't have to work as hard. But they had to work really hard, and they did. So congratulations to, to Japan. Before we move on from Japan, Everett is Japan an Olympic medal contender? Yes. Yeah, I don't know if they're a top. Like I don't know if they're a gold medal contender. But it do I see a world like VNL where Japan can get themselves into a semifinal and get themselves into a bronze medal match? Hundred percent. Like I, I, I absolutely do. Um, I think this is a team that is deadly, and when this team executes, they can be amongst the best, and they can like you can't take an off day against Japan, right? And we know that the passion that this team, the level of passion that this team plays with, we know the the level of determination that they they, they play with as well, um, and. Like we saw at VNL this year, like I, I think that that scenario is completely possible, um, and it's the Olympics, and anything can happen in the Olympics, right? So yeah, hundred percent. I think that they are they are a team in the medal hunt for sure. Do are they a team that I think can win? No, right? Like obviously any team can win. Like let's not just like anything can happen. I I but, disagree with that. Not any team can win. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, to, maybe. To, no, uh, I don't see Japan as a medal contender right now. Uh, nope. Now, with with the format change of the Olympics next year, having it be three pools of four instead of two pools of six, and everyone's going to play only three matches in pools instead of five, Ooh. I actually I actually think that plays into Japan's hand really nicely. They're, they're like that's for for teams that aren't as deep, that is two less matches they're going to have to play before the bracket. So that oh, that, that makes me sad though. I kind of like the. I agree. I, I'm I'm bummed about that. I think that's a bad change. I, I want more volleyball in pools. I want. I want those five matches. I hate. I hate the way that they're gonna. Especially like it's always right. awkward with three pools. Like yeah, three well, pools it's, just it just makes it it's super terrible. Hard. They're doing like the top two out of each pool, and then the top two of the three third place teams make it. out. I think that's I so hate, stupid. I hate that. I hate that. Very like old Champions League. Very stupid. But yeah. uh, I I don't think Japan's a medal contender. I think in an Olympic format, when 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 they get to us, when they even in the round of eight. Uh, they they'll definitely make it out of pools because their floor is so high, uh, mm-hmm. except like falling asleep and losing to Egypt. But I honestly do think they learned their lesson from that. Uh, I think they'll certainly make it to the round of eight. But whoever they get there, Poland, Italy, the U.S., France, they're probably going to get one of those four. And I wouldn't pick them to beat any of those four teams in an Olympic quarterfinal match. So I don't see it. But I, I this I just, is I, though the best. This is the best Japan team we've ever seen. I think that's not oh, yeah. debatable at all. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think the change of format really leads to less because we've seen some wonky things go down in Olympic pool play over the past few years with those those pools of six, uh, aka yeah, like, Canada, Canada dummying USA in uh, game one back in twenty sixteen. 
Um, that was nice 2021, the the USA three donged the the life out of France, and France went on to win Olympic gold, and the US didn't make it out of pools. Like that, that's yeah, that's that's how it goes. Exactly, exactly right. So I I think that leads to some a little a little bit more chaos. But you're right. I think with just like a four team pool, it might be it might be difficult. But I still think I still think they're in that they're in the hunt for bronze. I I, I would say. Well, we will see. Uh, we don't have to spend very much time talking about this team, the champions of Pool C, Poland. They're seven and zero. They've won something like I think it's twenty four matches in a row at this point. Uh, they're ridiculous. They're really, really good. They did this without Bartosz Kurek and without Mateusz Pini. They're the best team in the world. They are the prohibitive gold medal favorite going into next year. And they there's nothing really more. Leon. Well, like, Leon played a little bit. I think he played against Argentina, I think. Maybe the Netherlands. Uh, I, I don't remember. It doesn't matter. They're they're so deep. They're so stacked. They're so good. And they've figured out how to win now. Uh, if you don't think that Poland is a gold medal favorite for next year, you have not been watching volleyball. And if you don't think really Poland is 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 not the gold medal favorite for next the. year, you're not watching volleyball. Yep, the, the the gold medal favorite, and like it, it's truly like it's for me, it's Poland against the field right now. Much like in women's, it's Turkey against the field. But I mean, that's for another conversation. But yeah, like like right now, it's it's Poland against the field. Like this team is absolutely dominant. Any anyone other than Janusz goes down, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't. Like this. That's team, true. This ja- team, Janusz, Janusz is that piece. Is is that piece right? Because then you're going to either Lomach or Firle, and I mean, we 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 all know how we feel about Lomach. Big Firle fans, but he's no Janusz, right? No. So this this team, the right now, the only thing that can stop this team, I think, is themselves, right? I agree. Right, like. Like no offense, Rob, but toe to toe, they're at their best. USA versus Poland, like USA doesn't get out of that one, right? Like they, like, like for USA to beat, for anyone to beat Poland right now, Poland has to have an off day. Yeah, I, I, I would like to see us play them, not in Poland, for example, in somewhere like I don't know, maybe Ooh, Paris. Paris, yeah. Maybe we could play him over there. Uh, uh, by the way, Leon dropped 20 against Argentina and 17 okay. against the Netherlands, over 40% efficiency in both. So he played. He was he was very good. Um, Poland at their best is the best team in the world. It's not even close. I do think that the, the, U, the U.S. actually matches up decently well against them. I do want to give Marcin Janic all the credit in the world. He has been unbelievable this summer and is, in my opinion, the one reason why that why Poland has turned around from their previous failure to get it done in big moments. And he is now the guy. He has played every game this summer, other than like week one VNL. He has played every game. He's played. He's been so good. He's won two Champions Leagues in a row with Zaxa. He is the guy, and he's probably the most underrated setter on the planet. The other people I got to shout out are underrated. Norbert Huber. Yeah, I, I don't think we talk about him in like a top five in the world conversation because I don't think he's like he's set. He's like as sexy of a play style at the setter spot, but he is that good. I think he is. And I put also, him in the top ten. I don't know if I put him oh, in the top five. See, that's exactly what I'm saying. I think he's the most underrated setter in the world. All, but also their middles. The the re, the one thing that the U.S. has been completely unable to stop, and actually the same with Canada when they played them earlier this week, the Polish middle attack has been completely unstoppable. They, they're just like guaranteed to hit like eighty five percent efficiency against anybody, even like any, against Argentina. Is there any middles that can? Because like yeah, Argentina is good, but like Lozere is fantastic, but Argentina and Serba is not compared to anything the U.S. Ha- like like truly like. Like it, to me, like the U.S. has the best middle core in the world, other than Poland, <laughs> and and the U.S. Uh, Poland, yeah. and the U.S. Every time we've played them, like VNLs and World Championship quarterfinals last year, got absolutely torched in the yeah. middle, we which, got is, which is even destroyed in the middle both times. Which is even worse because some of your best middles play in Poland and play these That's guys right. on on a regular basis. Some There's... of them are teammates with these guys. You know, like <laughs> they play them both every do. day in practice. <laughs> And I again, I think Janusz gets a lot of credit for that. I really think he does. So Poland's awesome. Poland's okay. very good. Great. Congratulations, awesome. Poland. We Janusz up there with Micah and Dicheko. See, like I, I, I don't, don't agree with that at all. Everett's, like, Everett's being a hater. 
I'm not being a hater. I I still think he's fantastic. But the like, results do is, speak for themselves. Is, is we he, we ju- is he in the category of like a DeCheco or a Micah or a Gianelli or ever? We judge quarterbacks in the NFL based on their team victories. It's why Tom Brady is the greatest quarterback of all is time. He, is he a is, Luke Kerr? I don't know. Is Tom Brady the best thrower of a football ever? No, no, it's not even close. But he's the best player of all time because he wins. Martin Janusz has won way more than any other setter in the world the past three years, and that's a fact. He's also got bazookas everywhere, you know? Like, he, he's he's just got cannons everywhere. He's got literal weapons of mass destruction, like, one through 11 on, on his roster. So, um, but you're right. He has won. He's won Champions League. He's won VNL. He's won Euro, Euro Volley. He's won, won this. Like he's, it, I, he's won a lot. I, I I think right now. I think for me, the setters in the world are hot of him. Micah DeCecco, um, uh, Gianelli, Sakita. And... How dare you put Sakita in front of Janish? What are we talking about here, bro? What Sakita are we talking about? Is so what good. We, Sakita, how, what has Sakita ever won in his career? Whoa, whoa, whoa! But this is what this are we is, talking this also, about? This is also why in the NFL they have a conversation that wins don't dictate how good a, a quarterback is. This this is one of your worst takes in history. If if you put Sakita over Giannis, it's absolutely bonkers. Like you you think that. Janusz over Fabian Jizga with the same weapons didn't wasn't the single difference for this Polish team. It you're just, was. You're just stealing. You're just stealing arguments from the chat right now. Yeah, Jizga <laughs> was so bad, and and Leon hit like seventy five percent efficiency in the Olympic quarterfinal and lost to and lost to France. Janusz is the difference. He's uh, I. You can't put him any lower than fourth in the world. Can't put him any lower than fourth. That's enough about Poland. Last but not least, Everett. The Maple Volleys are going back to the Olympics. It's the third one oh. in a row, 2016, 2021, and this one was the craziest of them all. This, this was crazier than the five-set win over Cuba in Vancouver. This was crazier than that. Um, I don't – This was this, crazier this, than that. You I, were I dead. That. You were dead in the water. We were, were down 0 2. We were down 0 2. We had to pull off the reverse sweep. But, I, but against, you had but Cuba. you had control and over that. You had no did. control over this. You had none, to... none of that. We had control over it on Friday night and we didn't and, take care of the job. And yeah. once again, I do want to give full like full credit to, to Belgium, right? They're not being in like the sad part about it, Rob, is that they choked, right? That's 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 the reality of it. Who Belgium? Oh, oh. yeah. Bulgaria played their best match of the tournament. There's no doubt about that. I bow down to Sokolov for the rest of my life. Whatever he wants. Whatever he wants. If you're in the Discord, you already know what I told you, what I said I, I would do for that man. So, uh, just once again, just another reason to, to join the Discord. Um, but, you know, that was, that was a team who got to the fourth set and realized, holy shit, we're about to qualify for the Olympics. Yep, and probably poop themselves a little bit. There's probably a poop left in some of their shorts a- after that one, um, and you-, you could just see it after that game was done. I mean, everyone was saying it in the Discord that like both teams looked devastated, and the only team that was happy about this was Canada, um, because it was like like Belgium played such a good tournament, and they started with like pushing Poland to five. You know, and they they really took care of business all the way through. And I think that this was really like finally Sam Daru has some other dogs on the team, right? And this right. was really a fantastic, fantastic uh, job by by Belgium as a whole. Zanini, you yelled at me and called me an idiot when I was nineteen, back when you were coaching Slovakia at the uh, uh, World League qualifiers. But I forgive you; it's all right. You clearly did a great job. You were chest bumping guys and uh and and stuff like that it it was great to watch but at the end of the day this is three straight olympics that canada has now qualified for on the men's side and i mean every one of them has come down to the wire the first one back in 20 uh, back in 2016 we lose to cuba in edmonton heartbreaking fashion we have to do go over to to china and japan and basically go undefeated 
to qualify for the last chance qualifier. Of course, last time around, beating Cuba in an epic five-setter after losing at the Olympic qualifiers to Argentina. And now this one was just... Like, as I thought, I, I thought we were dead in the water. I, I thought it was done. I, I was prepping a speech to congratulate Belgium. And now here we are going to the Olympics. And I don't even think Canadians understand how the magnitude of it, just it's because of, of enormous, how, enormous, because of how funding works in Canada, it's all based off of, off of uh, uh, the Olympics, like your world championship results and the Olympics. World championships did not go well for the nope. men's national team, right? But having secured a bid like almost an entire calendar year before on the podium, give us that money. Give us that cheddar. Let's go. Let's go. Um, this is just going to, and especially since the women are on the doorstep too, it's just going to increase funding for Volleyball Canada here in this country. And it's absolutely massive. But ultimately, I, I could not be happier for this group of guys, for the team, for, for the coaching staff, for, for everyone. It's been a long two years for this program. So to cap it off in this way by winning uh, a spot Olympics is, is absolutely unreal. Um, I think there's, what there's a, a masterclass by Tomas Semelvoo. What yes. a job that man has done. Absolutely insane. What, with what they looked like at VNL. Now that was like with him. He had maybe two weeks on the job, two weeks in the gym. He plucked Luke Herr off the practice court. He had the tournament of his life in Olympic qualifiers. They looked transformationally better at the Norseka Championship, and they looked even better at Olympic qualifiers. Arthur Schwartz is the man. Eric F. and Lepke, Stephen Marr, they are the man. Luke Herr is the man. Jordan Schnitzer had a great tournament. Justin Louie had a great tournament. What a job by Tomas Tomelvolo. What a job. What has to be top two or three coaches on planet earth right now i mean he well he, if you if, he if won, you were to give like a coach league and, uh, un, un, unbelievable the job that he did with this group if you, it, like if there was a coach of the year for the 2023 calendar you give it to to seven no unquestionably no doubt about it not like and like that's like i completely i was just thinking about his stuff his work with canada i wasn't even <laughs> like thinking that he won a damn champions league you know like he did win a champions league yeah, so um, just unreal. You're right. Like, I think Arthur Schwartz played really, really well throughout the tournament, and we've got a dog out there on the right side. I absolutely love that. I couldn't be happier for Eric Lepke and the yes. way that he has really showed up. And, I mean, he's he's struggled with the national team in the past. Like, he really hasn't shown up, and this has been the first time that he – showed that he could be not only a guy for this team, but like a guy guy, like like someone that you can just throw out there and and, and he's going to put it up. Stephen he had 46% Mars, efficiency on the tournament. Lefty. He was so, he was so efficient. So, <laughs> so, so efficient. And that, that's the fact, like the, the duo that we have on the left side right now with Mar, who's just an absolute workhorse and just uh, does so much for this team. And then Alepke, who's just so tactical and has so much finesse. And then you got the big banger on the right side. I think Schnitzer was, a, was really solid down the middle. Like the fact that you have Damianenko and Schnitzer who basically started for this team, the majority of the year is, or not the majority of the year, but like, at, like towards the end of it is, is, is saying something. Um, Neither of them were even sniffing the court last summer. No, Demi Nanko wasn't on the roster anywhere near. And, and Schnitzer right. was like the 14th guy all the time. And, and and an extra. So the the I think you know Justin Louis like talk about a turnaround from when he got basically got ch chased off the court last year and didn't even start for the B team like man there's just so many storylines with this Canadian team and I absolutely love it. Um they've been through so much. They've, they've been, been through they've, so much. Like Rob, you're telling me that this is the exact same team that got three down by the United States just like a, a little over a month ago on this very channel like wow. Um. Yeah, it, it's it, it is very much. Yeah, it it it. I, I I'm I'm speechless to be honest. I was walking I'm on cloud nine yesterday. <laughs> yeah, I'm so happy for Canada. I I really am. I'm so happy for those guys. I. It is you can't overstate that turnaround, the the turmoil that they have been through since Glenn Hogue's retirement after to after Tokyo. 
and what they've been through with two coaches and so much roster turnover. The, the retirement of a golden generation of players, Graham Vigrass, Gord Perrin, TJ Sanders, Shawan Vernon Evans leaving the program, hiring Blair ben Joseph, Ban, Blair ben, yeah. hiring and then getting rid of Ben Josephson, completely retooling the roster, completely retooling the coaching staff and doing it fast enough this year to get that team to Olympic level is unbelievable. It's unbelievable. And Canada and some will get all the credit in the world. I'm so happy for that team. Yeah, it's, uh, it's still, it's still incredible to me. Um, the way this team has, has qualified, like even like you lose Ryan Sclater heading into this, like this, this was had every, every recipe for disaster. Uh, and, and somehow they were able to, to make it through. Um, like, and I, I also like, other than that, that Belgium match, which was just so frustrating to watch, it was just so frustrating to watch because I don't think we played terribly. It wasn't our best match, but I also think a lot of that to do is, is to how Belgium plays. And they're really good at putting you on, on, under, on your heels because they're, they're very aggressive. Um, that, you know what, I, I was very happy with how this team played throughout, throughout the, the entirety of the tournament. Um. And yeah, I, I cannot wait. Like, Rob, we 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 we've got to figure something out for VNL Ottawa next year. We got to we got to get get some of these pe- beautiful people out in the chat and whatnot out out to to VNL Audio, Ottawa because that is going to be a time. And it's already confirmed. I actually, I've heard I've heard rumors already that it's supposed to be second week of VNL this year. Oh, November. okay, yeah, interesting. So we'll 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 see what's up. Yeah, so good, so good for Canadian volleyball, so good for Norseka. I'm I'm thrilled about this. So those are the six teams that have qualified. These teams were close, but did not quite get it done this week. Argentina, Belgium, Cuba, Italy, and Slovenia. They all had very good chances to qualify late. They did not. Uh, All these teams are in very different places in the world. I mean, we talked about Belgium. What's really the the Belgium I feel the most sad for because Belgium has absolutely no chance to qualify by a ranking. No, that was that was that, that was, was it. it for Belgium. That was it. And now, now Belgium. I mean, you you gave them a lot of credit, and I agree. They get all the credit in the world because they didn't even make it out of pools at Euro Volley. They couldn't even come top four in a pool of six in Europe, and they almost got top two in an Olympic qualifier pool. They were so close, and that's why. And and they knew it too. They they knew it. They knew exactly what the scenario was. They knew exactly what the stakes were. And it, it was just so close. And I do feel so sad for them because they played great and they, they would have deserved it had they qualified. But I agree with you. It was uh, like we were talking earlier in the week, Czech Republic, when the Czech Republic was up 13 to nine against Brazil in the fifth. Mm-hmm. And they just, they, they're, you could see in their heads like, oh my God, we're about to beat Brazil and Rio. They did not beat Brazil and Rio. They, 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 they just couldn't quite emotionally put it over the line and i completely agree with you belgium up two to one on bulgaria they were thinking oh my god we're going to the olympics right and you just you you just can't think that you can't think that you you have to finish through point 25 or point 15 or whatever it is and they just didn't quite have that just didn't quite have it no i mean like it's a dagger. I mean, Riegers was just, he was unreal throughout this. Like, Amazing. Rob, we, we, we watched him, got to watch him a little bit in the CEV Cup this year. Um, but now the world knows how good Farrah Riegers is. And you're right. I'm, I'm crushed for, for Belgium. I, I really am. And if it wasn't, like, I would be wanting to give them the spot. If it wasn't Canada that basically, basically took, took, took their spot, um, I think I really think that, that, that they deserved it. And then they're nowhere near to be able to qualify for those next five or four spots. Um, no, no chance. So that, that, that's that's a, really, a really tough one for them. Uh, every other team, though, like Argentina and Italy are going to be in. Yep. Uh, there's, there's no doubt about that. They'll qualify directly. Cuba and Slovenia. I think Slovenia is on the cusp one way and Cuba is on the, on the cusp the other way. That's right. Uh, we'll take a look at that in just a second. I, I, but before we do that, this and uh, me and Kavika Shoji, actually Eric's older brother, the former backup setter on the USA, we got into conversation about this on the the, the video on I put on yeah, I on Instagram. And because and Kavika is right, he says the the teams like Italy, 
and I think a little to a lesser extent Argentina, the teams that knew that they had the security blanket of a high world ranking, even though they were they were obviously going to put their best foot forward to try and win every match, I still think that there was something in the back of all of their heads thinking like, you know what? If we don't get it done this week, it's okay. We're still going to the Olympics. 100%. Yeah. Especially Italy. Like Italy yeah. absolutely knew that. I think Argentina, Argentina definitely knew that. Slovenia is a, I feel a little bit more disappointed in because they had a good chance to like straight out go and get it and they didn't show up all that well against the US or Japan. But teams like Italy and Argentina like they know. They know that they're in. Yeah. And when you know that you're in, just in the back of your head it's a little bit difficult to to get up and 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 really play with that level of urgency, that level of urgency that teams like Germany and Canada played with. And teams like Belgium played with because they knew that it was their only chance. It's just a different approach. Just a different approach for a team when your world ranking is that high and you know the system and know that you're probably in. But speaking of the world ranking, here's the picture. Here's the deal. I want to make this as clear as possible. There are five spots left. Mm -hmm. On the left is the team's current world ranking. On the right is the is the team's current point total at the end of the 2023 summer into 2024. At the end of the 2024 VNL preliminary round, the top five teams not already qualified will get the last five bids to Paris. However, there will be one team that qualifies from Africa, which is why Egypt and Tunisia are in the picture, because every other continent right now has a team qualified. Uh, mm -hmm. Africa will get a team qualified. Egypt is uh, almost 20 points ahead of Tunisia, and Egypt just beat Tunisia head-to-head -head and had that win over Japan. So uh, neither of and those I, teams... I, yeah, the, neither of those teams are really going to be competing in anything. It's like I, I, yeah. we could almost pencil in Egypt right away. Like I know I it's think, not official. But... I think we can. Yeah, I, I don't know. Like neither of them are playing VNL. I have no idea if they're playing anything else. Like next May or June, I would say probably not. So it's it's, I would say ninety nine percent Egypt will, will is going to the Olympics. Yeah. That means that there are four spots left for the for the the rest of those teams on that list, the non African teams. There are four spots left. Italy is in. Argentina is in, and Slovenia is in. I mean, look yeah. at, look at those numbers. Slovenia is at three oh seven. The next and Serbia actually right now is sitting in at two fifty three. That's yeah. over fifty points behind. I, I like. There's no way that Slovenia can fall far enough in just like three weeks of VNL to miss out on the Olympics at this point. I think that those top three teams are in. Yeah, hundred so percent. Serbia that, really messed themselves up with this tournament. They had a bad week. They had a they had a bad week, and they got a lot of minuses in the, uh, yes, in the they world did. rankings here. As did the Netherlands down there at two hundred and fourteen points. Oh, I think I think done. I think they're dead. Yeah, yeah I, I, I don't think I don't think they can they can catch like unless they just randomly go to like the VNL final next year and like win. But it's it's not about making a deep run in the VNL. It's more so about winning every possible game, every match. Stage. Absolutely. Yep. Every match in the group stage, which is it's so huge for, for those teams who are going to qualify. Like it's basically to, for me, it's Serbia and Cuba. Right. I agree. Um, it, it, it has to be between Serbia and Cuba. And to me, those are two teams who are trending in different directions. I right? agree. I think Cuba's trending upwards. and I think Serbia is trending downwards. So I think the next I think VNL next year is going to be phenomenal. But the, to me, the, there's 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 only that race in the women's is Netherlands and Canada. Men's is just Serbia, Cuba. Yeah, I, I really think it is just Serbia and Cuba. Serbia leads Cuba by about 17 points. That's not that much. If, nope. if if that that could that could get switched in two games. Yeah, I mean, like, like if it, they they play head to head, right? Even if you only get like five points for for the uh, the win, that's still like a ten point swing. That's a that's a ten point swing. Yeah. Right. So the, I, th I think that's the race. I think the Netherlands had too bad of a week this week. They lost way too many games. They got swept by Bulgaria. They got swept by Belgium. They lost to Canada in five. They lost to Poland. They just lost too many games. They fell too far down the list. I don't think the Netherlands has a chance. And Slovenia, conversely, had too good of a week and too good of a summer. In Eurovolley bronze, like that certainly helped their world ranking right there. And I think the very last match in Pool B, which didn't end up mattering for the pool, but Slovenia beat Serbia 3-0. to zero. Yeah, I think that like that really locked it in. That really was like the the cementing sort of clincher for
for Slovenia yeah. to really separate themselves from Serbia in the rankings. I, I think yeah. that Italy, Argentina, and Slovenia are in. Yeah, that was a 13 point swing there for Slovenia when they when they over Serbia when they beat Serbia there. So it's actually what pushed them over France. And I mean, right. France is getting shafted out here because everyone else is getting points and they're they're already qualified. But I mean, as we talk about it, Rob, it just reminds me how important it actually is to qualify early just because yes. now VNL next year is a training ground is is hey you want to rest someone rest them you want to f- figure out something maybe try to f- try to work a lineup of a different offensive system for the Olympics go for it right <sighs> just such a luxury we've never uh, Canada has never qualified this early um, I don't. <laughs> That's I, I'm, I'm not used to this. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not used to this. It was dramatic. It was still dramatic. But I'm. I'm not. I'm not used to this. So that's the picture going into next summer. It's I, I think it's a two team race between Cuba and Serbia. Everett agrees. Yeah. I think that's it's going to be pretty much that simple. I personally am rooting for Cuba. I think they deserve Same. it more. Same. I think they would be a, a more worthy team in the Olympic fields. I think they would be scarier to play against. Serbia at, in their current state doesn't scare anybody. Nope. Nobody. Absolutely not. No one. No one at all. There's not one player on that Serbian roster right now who I think I would have to like fully form a game plan around. Like there's guys you need to be aware of, and they've got a, they've got a good guys. But there's no one on that Serbian roster who'd be like this guy's a problem, and he's gonna really like. There's we have no answer for him. Nope. They just don't have that. Also, I think their their setter position is a massive problem. So yeah, uh, I I am hoping that Cuba gets in. They almost did this week, but. Uh, Cuba would be a better addition to the Olympic field. And I really want Robert Landy Simone to get to end his career with a birth in the Olympics. He deserves it. My question for you, Rob, is does Norseka get the overall win from the general Olympic qualifiers? When we look at how many teams, like when you look at the women's side, um, you had the, uh, the, the main team, like USA was the, like, yeah, we, we thought we expected them to qualify. Dominican Republic kind of shocked everyone to qualify. And Canada was, was the next, the, the next team up, right? They, they got some big wins. Same thing on the men's side. Obviously USA is going to qualify. They care, take care of business. Canada shocks everyone to, to qualify. And then you have Cuba who is sitting like Cuba had Italy won that set in five Cuba would have qualified. Right. Had, right. Italy, had Italy won the match against Brazil yesterday in five, that like that it must have been torture for Cuba because oh. you were right, like it was right where you wanted. Like Italy did everything, everything, every like like I had I thought about it like because there was like in the fifth set there like at one point Bulgaria had a four point lead and I was like yes let's go and then and then they blew it and then, and then, then they, it was they eight. and then it got tied and I was just like. Yeah. If I lose, if we lose this way, that's going to be ter- it's going to be maybe even worse. So like for Cuba, that must have been agony because it was right, it yeah. was right there. Um, so yeah, when you look at how Norseka teams minus Mexico, we're not going to talk about them. Th- that was a complete mismanagement of what what they did, not bringing yeah, that, that a- team to uh, Norseka's and getting the chance to play USA and in, in, in Canada and Cuba. That was, but whatever. Um, every other Norseka team really either met or exceeded expectations completely agree completely agree great summer for the north Seca federation so uh, we're going to talk about the pool we're going to talk about a couple of the pools going to break down a couple of the matches more particularly but ever before we do that it's important to tell the people about a couple of things the first is that volleyball.store nice hoodie looking good over there oh you know it's pretty comfy it just got really cold here in uh in toronto so uh... it's pretty cold here too so yeah, we head over to that volleyball.store to use the code SPICY to get 15% off your entire order. Lots of good stuff. 9x9 nine nine squared collection, uh, spicy volleyball. It's 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 very good. It's a good store. It's a good way to support us. So uh, hit up that volleyball.store. Also, uh, great viewership on this video. We appreciate you guys watching, getting really active in the live chat. That's great. We want more thumbs ups on the video. We want more thumbs up on the video. And Everett, as of right before this video went live, we had 29,998 subscribers. We, were- we are now at 30,005. Yes, excellent. So it is during this episode that we passed a threshold of 30,000 subscribers on YouTube. That's awesome. I, I was, I was going to tell people to 
try and subscribe and be that three thirty thousandth person but you also subscribe anyway if you're watching this you're not subscribed you should do it yes very much so so be, become a subscriber join our community and uh make sure to go ch check out the volleyball source discord uh once again if you're not there what are you doing it's the best volley doing? online volleyball community in the world once again volleyball tv shuts down we've got it you want to know anything about anything we've got it like Truly, just 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 come hang out, stay a while. You'll you'll enjoy so it. Great. It's been such a such an amazing resource in my my volleyball consumption experience the last couple of years, and it will be for you too. 100%. Uh, last thing we got to talk about, Everett, is our favorite segment. Let's go. We gotta talk, Let's we gotta go. talk about where's Daddy? Where's Daddy? Daddy Stankovich, our our hero, the official mascot of the Volleyball Source Universe. He is hidden somewhere in this show. We hide him somewhere in every show. Uh, on, on our last episode, I think this might have been my finest Where's Daddy work of all time. Because if you, I, uh, I agree. This, this is a really good one. Uh, on last episode, we were talking about the United States beating Turkey 3-1. to one. You see there the celebration photo. Most of the time, I end up just photoshopping Daddy Stockwich's face onto somebody else's face. But if you look at the faces of the American players there, you know, they all, they all look like themselves. So I wonder where Daddy Stockwich could be. He's here. He's here. He is inside the eyeball of the Japanese mascot. There's Daddy. This was such a good one. I was so proud of this one. <laughs> That's where I hid Daddy. And the only person to find Daddy was John Lau in the comments. He says, oh, my oh, God. It go. it, he says, oh, my God. It took me so long to find Daddy hiding in the eyes of the volleyball mascot. Kudos to Rob. Like, Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, that that was this is some of my finest work hiding Daddy Stankovic. So if you find Daddy Stankovic, you need to comment where he is and the timestamp in the video of where he is in the main YouTube comment section after the stream is over. So don't put it in the live chat. Don't put it in the live chat. Put it in the main comments after the video is over. And if you do that and you find him, you get a shout out in next week's show. Uh, I don't think anything will ever top this one. But uh, oh, Daddy's... We'll have, see. we'll have to see. We'll have to see. We'll have to see. I really like this one. I need to post this on Instagram. I'm so sad that that Dragon Stankovic deleted his Instagram. Just heartbreaking. Someone needs to get. Someone needs to let him know. The world that needs we're, more. We're doing this with. Yes, the world needs more daddy. The world needs more daddy. So we're doing what we can over here on the channel. All right, uh, let's talk about a couple matches in the pools and just like look at the standings of how everything ended before we sort of tie a bow on this national team season. We already talked about Germany. They had all of their like their easiest matches were late. They ended up winning everything, no problem. Um, however, those matches between uh, Cuba, Brazil, and Italy head to head ended up being pretty electric. That 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 was uh, those are very fun games. Brazil beats Italy in five. Brazil beats Cuba in four, and then Cuba, like like you said, Everett, Cuba needed Italy to win that match in five against Brazil, and Cuba would have had a chance uh, against Iran. But because Brazil won, it was over. Yeah, it's just really too bad. I mean, I would have really liked to see Cuba qualify. I called for them to qualify. Um, I no one expected Germany though, so right, uh, except for em 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 Emil. Emil. Um, <laughs> but ultimately, I think you know, like, I think both Ukraine and che Czechia um, have so many reasons to be proud for this tournament. You know, with the, with the way they the, the way they played, Iran on the other hand, they got to figure some things out. This Yikes. this was a very disappointing. Like, realistically, Rob, what's more disappointing, Iran or Netherlands? I think the Netherlands because their expectations were a little bit higher. Uh, I haven't liked what I've seen from Iran really since like the 2022 VNL where they made the playoffs. They've been pretty bad yeah, yeah. ever since. So. Uh, but like going one and six and having their coach resign midway through the tournament and just playing bad volleyball and not looking inspired at all is extremely disappointing. And they are they're they're nowhere near the Olympic qualification picture. There is zero chance that Iran's going to Paris. No way. They have got to turn they, something around. They have lost so many points. This so year. many points. So many. This is a team that is now in a free fall, uh, sitting at fifteenth. Um, yeah, they were and they were top ten for they were they a were while. a top ten team for a while. Um 
but yeah, this is this is a not so great uh, spell here for Iran, which is weird because they're they're doing it on the youth side. They're doing it at those younger age groups, and it's just not converting um, to the olders. And I mean, hey, we're seeing it with Amin how Amin is fantastic at VNL, but then just disappears the rest of the time. So I mean, I don't even know if he was on this roster. He was. He didn't play that much. He wasn't that good at VNL this summer. He just had that yeah. breakout year last year, and then everybody figured him out. So. Yeah, I don't know what to say about Iran. Uh, we we talked about Italy; they're going to be fine. We talked about Cuba. I hope they're going to be fine. I honestly do hope they qualify. It's like getting to see Robert Landy Simone play in the Olympics for his country yeah. after all this time. It, the The volleyball world deserves that, so yeah. I hope that happens. I I fully agree I, I, as well. Uh, and then, I mean, there's Italy, and Italy is just. Italy is Italy. I think they, they I mean, uh, apparently Diz Giorgi even talked about it in an interview. Like, hey, okay, look, we're, we're already qualified. Um, they, I, I want to see them switch something up. Like, they, like, you have a top 10 setter in the world in Spertoli. Throw them in there. Like, throw in some, some different guys. Switch, switch some things up sometimes. This was mismanagement. If Diz Giorgi knows that, mismanagement. if, if, if Diz Giorgi knows that, that they're already qualified, which they are, then the and obviously the most important tournament to Italy this year was Eurovolley, where they took silver. I'm by the way, I'm sick of hearing the Italian fans like give excuses for their team for claiming that there, that there are zero tournaments that matter to them. Like what, anytime Italy loses, like oh we don't care, this tournament doesn't matter to us. Be better if you're going to play your starters. You should you should expect more out of your team than this. And what I'm saying is that De Giorgi should not have played all the starters this whole time. No. He ran Gianelli, Micheletto, Lavia, Bolasso, Romano. He ran those guys into the ground. Into the in ground, a, yeah. In a tournament that they didn't even need by his own admission. And still they they played the starters every game and they lost three matches. But not That's only this tournament, management. all Euro Volley, all of VNL. Like right. what is why? What is going on here? Why? You're Italy. Let, you have you let have the Ricardo Spertoli play. He's a top ten setter in the world. Let him go, dude. And he yeah. came off the bench against Brazil and served. I think in the first or second set. I can't remember which second set and made it and helped them make a huge comeback. Served like two aces and dug two balls and like he was massive. He's so good. Let give Gianelli a game off. Hundred percent. Gianelli needs a game or two off. Yeah, absolutely. Spiritually needs a game or two in. Like I, but I don't really you understand also that. like you also need to give other guys like who's who's the next guy off the bench, Italy? Who who do you say? say like Rinaldi? No, I I think it's Bobo Lenta now on the right side because we did see him actually in the latter half okay. of the tournament. Romano's leash got shorter, which I think is good because uh yeah, we did not he needs, we did he not needs see. a short leash, he needs that pressure. I agree, he does. Right. And Bovalenta came in a couple times. He came in against Brazil, he came in against uh I think against Cuba the day before, uh, when Cuba beat him. By the way, we, we definitely got to talk about that match. Cuba beating Italy three to one. I can't believe I live in a world where that's possible. Why? But uh, I, because like just like thinking about where those two teams are, like have been in the world historically over the last ten years. I mean, like, yeah. If you're just if you're just talking about the last ten years, but not if you're yeah, talking last about the last like you know like overall overall in vo volleyball, like those are the two of the most storied nations for volleyball. Not to mention, like if you're talking about the now, like most of Cuba plays in 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 Italy. I mean, that's true. I did I I did ro like roll out a scenario in our last show about how I thought Cuba could play Italy, and it was exactly they did ex they did ex exactly what yep, I said. They, so. they they brute forced them. They brute yeah. forced him, and they they tried to crack the nut, and they did. And, and however, Bovalenta did come off the bench in that game and hit nine for you know, forty seven percent efficiency. So I agree with shortening Romano's leash, but I don't agree with everything else. You got to give Spertoli some games, G like give Rinaldi some games, give Botolo some games. Like, yeah, give, just what? You've why got, not? You've got guys, yeah, you've got guys. You know, like, yeah, why not? Uh, good for Cuba though that this was a good tournament for them. Uh, they. And they actually did get some guys in, like in this Italy game. They got Masso in the middle. They got Gutierrez in on the right side. He came off the bench and was really good. Uh, Yant and Lopez both had really good tournaments. So um, I like what I'm seeing from Cuba. I hope that they're able to qualify. I really do. Yeah, and as do I. I once again, love this Cuban team. Herrera's my homie. Um, <laughs> Concepcion Devin, is the homie. Well, Concepcion is, is, is the true homie. Love that guy. Uh, Herrera is crazy.
<laughs> he is crazy, according as, as, to Concepcion. According to according to Concepcion, <laughs> if you don't know, go back and watch our our interview with him. Um, but yeah, definitely want to see. Would love to see Cuba there. Um, I would love like love to see Cuba over there there over Serbia for sure, without a doubt. Agreed. Pool B, there isn't really that much to talk about here. I am a little bit bummed for Slovenia. Uh, I was hoping that they could qualify through this straight up. I think that generation deserves it, but they. They had their two most important matches, and they got zero points against the U.S. and Japan. So they needed that. I do think that they'll qualify via ranking. We already talked about it. Yeah. Turkey beat Serbia head to head. That was nice for them. Serbia at three and four. Like that's just who Serbia is now. It's it's sad because we haven't seen Serbia in the Olympics in a long time. And they're in 2012, or I think they played 2012. They did not play 2016 or 21. They they would have been a good team in the Olympics both of those years. They wouldn't be that good of a team in the Olympics in 2024. They just wouldn't be that good of an addition to the field. We we talk about you know Brazil not really striking the fear in the hearts of everyone, and that like that used to be Serbia. Like Serbia used to be For a sure. team that like you played against, and like you knew you were in any day of the week. And now that's just that's just really not the case. Um, like when you look at their, yeah, like. Uh, like Euro European Championships, they medaled in 17, 19, and 2020, and, and or 17 and 19, and 11 and 13, but then I've got fourth and then now sixth uh, at Euros. Like they're just, to, to, to me, they're just a team that's just been in free fall, and we've got to see them play in person. They just haven't been great. Nope, not not good enough. Definitely not uh, not good enough for the Olympics, in my opinion. It was a pretty good tournament for Turkey. Got to give him it. Uh, Mirza Lagumja was probably their best player. He was probably better than his brother, which was very impressive. That came out of nowhere. And I mean, Turkey kind of they kind of held seat. They they lost to the U.S., Japan, and Slovenia, but they beat everybody beneath them, including Serbia, early on. So that's good for them. It was better than they looked at Eurovolley. So. Uh, Better vibes for Turkey going into VNL next year. Do yeah. they have a chance to qualify for the Olympics? No, no, not not this time. No, but not, uh, but it's nowhere near. No, no, not 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 this time. But hopefully they'll be a player going into the next quad. So I guess I'll give them that. And yeah, we already talked about the U.S. and Japan World Cup champs. Whatever, whatever it's worth for us. Who cares? Yeah, uh, whatever. And then let me look at these standings. This is probably the most unpredictable pool. I may have ever seen the Netherlands in sixth. That's that was crazy to me. That's wild. Piazza's a homie, but he's still a stooge. Like <laughs> I think, <laughs> I think that's the, the old, that's the only way to put it. What this team was doing throughout the tournament in terms of their roster was complete mismanagement. One hundred percent. It honestly just kind of looked like a dumpster fire, and they were just freaking out and just throwing whatever that they could find, um, like hay or whatever, even though it's more flammable. Um, then that that's that's what it seemed like. This did not let seem like a team that was having fun playing together. Um, this did not seem like a team that enjoyed themselves. Um, part of me really mad that we had to play Netherlands in their first match because they still kind of looked decent back then and this is a very opposite traditionally the netherlands and i we've we've been the benefactors of this before at the olympics and we've been the benefactors before uh, in world championships and stuff like that where the netherlands will be will play them early and will like three dawn them they'll be bad and then they'll upset teams later on this was like the complete opposite they the started opposite. out they started out pretty decent against us and then really fell off after that and like man it, it, it was really tough to watch i have questions about their setting i have a question about their left side position i have a question is why wouter termat is not playing on the right side he is an, a, an elite level scorer he outscored namir in the effortler league finals last year and beat him why is he not your starting right side if namir can't go what is going on yeah Piazza. it's, it's, it's... Why, yeah, the, I don't if, care if you lose. If you lost, if I was there, we, I would have been interviewing you, and we would have been getting into the bottom. Of it. <laughs> yeah, the you, fact you need that... me around to keep you like to keep you on the straight and narrow to keep you honest. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> the fact that Termat's only action was on the left side in this tournament is unforgivable. It's unforgivable. It makes absolutely no sense. And, and like, if I, sorry, I, I, I had a, I had a bit of a rant on our last episode about Namir, and I'm not going to do that again. Go back and watch it, but. That that's what it comes down to for me is uh, 
Namir controls this team. Piazza does not. And the decisions that are being made are not in the best interest of the Netherlands as a team. But not to mention, like, if I could see a world where they're like, we want Namir and Termat on the court on this at the same time, right? How do we get them on the court? Let's put Termat on the left side. That okay, I great. kind of get. Figure that out in VNL! Exactly. But you had, like, I remember talking to one of the Dutch coaches. And like, Rob, you were you were there uh, in Ottawa. We were sitting uh, at the, the far end, um, just be, be, just beneath the DJ booth. And we were talking to the Dutch coaches during VNL. And they're like, yeah, Termat is coming and it's good. He, he's going to be joining the team and stuff like that. And then you didn't play him. If you're going to want to put him on the right side, or sorry, the left side, figure that out during the VNL. When it doesn't matter, right? Completely. And then maybe test it some more on the Euro volleys. And then when you go to the biggest tournament in in, in like of the year, because they they like the, a, a team whose uh, Olympic dream died. I don't know if there's a team whose Olympic dream died more this week than the Netherlands coming no, into they... this tournament. This was a team who was in position to maybe win a pool direct, uh, win this or bid directly from this pool, or next up go via. Um, uh, world rankings but they have they shot lost all, they lost almost 40 points at this yeah. tournament real bad and and now they now they have no chance like the, be, because of this because this tournament was so bad they went two and five now they have no chance none and that is they, they have nobody to blame but themselves i i have huge questions about the way this was managed um bulgaria i actually thought looked pretty darn good Obviously, we, we talked about their um, their match versus Belgium, which they won and helped Canada out. But they also three donged the Netherlands, and they we did. did talk about Simeon Nikolov at age at age sixteen coming off the bench in that one. But uh, if this was Svetan Sokolov's last tournament for his country, which I, I which I think that it might have been, uh, I just want to recognize how unbelievable of a career that guy has had. He'll play he'll play club another year or two. But I love Svetan Sokolov. I have always loved him. He's been one of my favorite opposites of a generation. And I want to give him just a huge amount of credit for wearing his country's flag so proudly for so many years and being the reason why Bulgaria was relevant for a decade. Because after Matej Kaziski chose to leave the team, Sokolov was the guy. He was really like the only guy. Because they had a, a bunch of dudes even older than him that hung around for too long. And they didn't Way do they didn't they do a great. good... They weren't great, and they didn't do a good enough job of getting the young guys in until now. They're doing it out of necessity. So Bulgaria's Bulgaria will be a good team in the near future because their youth pipeline is very good. Yes, it is very, very, good. very good. Very good. But Svetan Sokolov has pretty much single-handedly connected those generations. Without him, Bulgaria would be irrelevant. And I just I give him so much credit for being an amazing player. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, absolute legend. I just want to thank him for having one final amazing game. Seriously. That's, he could have, you know what, he could have had one of uh, the worst careers in the world as long as he plays that final game to beat Belgium. <laughs> that's all I want. That's all I need. That's, 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 that's it was, it was, like, how many, I don't even know how many he had on the, in this game. Um, I think it might have been 27. 30, 27. 27. Yeah, he was twenty-two for forty-two with four blocks uh, and an ace. I mean, it was th that's what it came down to. The Bulgaria yep. blocks eighteen on the night there, but yeah, I uh, Sokolov, thank you, grazie. Even though that's not, I don't know why I went to Italian there. You're Bulgarian, <laughs> but uh, there, there yeah. was a photo posted in the Discord that was very funny. It was a uh, breaking news: Svetan Sokolov, the first ever international player to be inducted into the Canadian Athletics Hall. Of Fame. <laughs> yes, I mean, if, awesome. if our country cared about volleyball at all, yes, but uh... <laughs> um, we already talked about Belgium. My my heart does break for them, but they. Um... They had too much ground to make up in terms of world ranking, and I just don't think they were emotionally ready to push it over the finish line this week. And then Argentina is going to be fine. They, uh, they're, they're, they though on the eye test this week were not as good as I wanted them to be. I don't think they're the medal contender that I thought that they might be for next year. I would disagree unless, with that. And well, they, like they're they've got they've got to show me that again. They've got to show me that that elite level, like to beat really good teams like to sure they like they beat they beat belgium in five they beat they lost to canada in four they they weren't that competitive against poland 
They beat China in five. Like, what are they doing going to five against China? Like, I, I wasn't as convinced by Argentina, and I have a couple questions about them. They definitely will still go to the Olympics where they belong. They deserve to be there. But um, I definitely had them rated over Japan earlier this summer, and now I'm questioning that a little bit. I think they're uh, closer now than they than I thought they were before. I think this just just honestly, I think it may have been a bit of a hangover from winning South Americas um, because like, I, I still think this, this team is, is legit. Um, other than Sebastian Soleil, there's not much difference from this team to the team that won bronze in Tokyo. Well, they right? got better. They got better at, they, they, at many positions. Exactly. Right. So I still think that like, and, and the way that Argentina plays, they're another passionate team. So I, I fully think <laughs> I, that's, but, that's an understatement. Santiago yeah. Danani talks more trash than any libero in history. It is crazy to watch that guy dig a ball and just stare at people through the net and then after the point just be mouthing off about how easy people are and how much Love they it. stink. It's really fun to watch. So he's, like he's like He's like a guaranteed yellow card every match as a libero. It's amazing. I love it. So that's what that's what I'm saying is like this is a team who knows how to battle. And this is a team who 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 knows how to win. And uh like I don't think we're gonna see Conte for VNL next year, but this this team is gonna be ready to go for Paris for sure. So I, I, I yeah, still I think agree. I still think that they're a metal contender for sure. Yep, I agree. Like them and them in Japan are in the same the same boat. Yeah, I agree. I, I I still think that my my personal world rankings going into next year are Poland, USA, Italy, France. Actually, I do still I, I would still put France fourth going into Paris at home yeah. and defending champs. Then Argentina and Japan in some order at five and six, and then and then Brazil. I don't even know about Brazil seven. Uh, like, man, I don't know. Slovenia I might even... over Brazil. I might even put Germany above them the way they looked this week. Ooh. They, they did beat them head to head. I think Rob, we should do a ranking video for VNL or for for uh, for Olympic qualifiers, like rank. Yeah, I, six. What, how many teams were there? What there were twenty four. Twenty four. Yeah, go one through twenty four. That's actually a pretty good idea. Uh, twenty four. Yeah, twenty four through one. We started. We started the, right. the back end. With right. Mexico. Yeah, we should do that and then do like some superlatives for national team season. Like, I think like coming up with some awards, like, like, like we talk about Samel Vuo, coach of the year. I, th- I think we should kind of put some of those together. So maybe we'll Ooh. film a. Maybe yeah, maybe let's, we'll... let's 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 do that. Some national team be superlatives, fun. some some awards and whatnot. I like that idea. Yeah, let's do that for so sure. So we'll put that out as a video. But Everett, this is it. National team season's over. It's over. And actually, the Lake of all the, Fem- the Lake of Volley Feminile already started this weekend. Like they okay. had their, I, I, I've not yeah. noticed at all. <laughs> yeah, they they had their first round of regular season games yesterday, and like uh, no, obviously I didn't watch any of them. But uh, so we're no breaks in volleyball. Obviously, we're back to the club game. But this has been an all time, all time national team summer, and just amazing it, to watch. It really, really has. Uh, also. We want to appreciate all of you who have been along for this ride. Uh, I know quite a few of you, like two thirds of our followers and subscribers on this channel, were not here when the the international season started. Uh, That's right. So we really want to uh, thank you for for watching. I mean, the numbers on some of these podcasts and some of these shows have been amazing. Um, yeah. So many, so many people tuning in, which 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 we absolutely love. Um, so if you are just a fan of international volleyball, we do encourage you. Like this show doesn't stop. We we jump right into the professional season. Um, on a regular basis and if you want to if you want to know how to follow professional volleyball watch this show come follow us on the discord we'd we'd love to ha- have you um and yeah i'm already excited for the 2024 national team season because uh we've uh we've been we've been killing it there's a lot to be excited about yeah it's been a great summer for all it's been a great summer for volleyball source and you guys watching the show are a big part of that. So thank you very much. You Ever is a massive part of that. They're, they are oh, the reason for it. We have we have the best community in volleyball. It's not even close. I absolutely love this community. I love the Discord. We love all of you guys. Uh, we love all the memes. We love all of you talking trash to each other in the chat. And uh, we're not slowing down. So thanks for being a part of it. Yeah, I think we should. Rob, we're going to preview the, some of the club leagues again. Oh, yeah. 
Yep. Yeah, those those videos had a big amount of success last year. We did Super Lega, Lega Volley Feminile, and and uh, Plus Liga. So we'll definitely do those in the next couple of weeks. Maybe we'll see and if then, I can jump on for, with us and help, or someone from Turkey can help us with the Sudan La Liga as well. That's a good idea. That's yeah. a good idea. I I, I kind of need that. So uh, yeah, we we did we did the one club transfer show about a month ago. But yeah, we're we're gonna start diving into the leagues, uh, into the domestic leagues, and we're gonna. You know, we're going to break down the club game the same to the same degree that we do the national team game. The Cho community. <laughs> this has really been <laughs> taking a chokehold of the Discord recently, eh? Sorry. That was bad. Yeah, that was that was pretty bad. <laughs> uh, we love you guys. We will see you on our next episode. It'll be next week at some point. And then fraudcasting, lol. <laughs> that that's us. Uh, yeah, ever we should do a video later this week. That that would be a fun one about national team superlative so keep uh be on the lookout for that but we'll see you on the next episode of the nine by nine at some point next week and we'll see you in the discord peace join the volleyball source discord like this video subscribe to our channel uh head up uh that volleyball.store and always remember where's daddy peace